Hey everyone, we're going to pick up where we left off in section 7.3. And uh, 7.3 is similar to 7.2, but we're applying our um, confidence interval to the mean, population mean. So we need to recognize the difference between that and the proportion, and we went over that in the last video. And uh, we talked a little bit about this formula right here, which we're going to use to calculate co a confidence interval for the mean, but we haven't applied it yet. So we're going to use the t distribution to get our critical value, which is uh, this t right here with the funny notation that the book uses. Uh, just like we did for the z, but we're going to use the t table, or you can use your calculator function. All right, so this is about where we left off uh, at this example on page 61. So a study of length of time that students require to earn a bachelor's degree. There were 80 students uh, at random select, randomly selected, and uh, the average of the sample was 4.8. So that means that our x bar then is 4.8. Our n is 80. And uh, our s is 2.2 years. And we're going to need all that to get a 95% confidence interval. All right, so I have all the information that I need to apply this formula. I just need to use my table to come up with the critical value for t. All right, so you have this table. In your course packet, it's just on the other side of the normal distribution at the very end. And I'm going to show you how to use this table. So we want a 95% confidence interval. And so the bottom goes over the confidence level. We want 95%. And we want to go to our sample size minus 1. So and n oops n minus 1 our sample size was 80 so we go to row 79 or we round down and so we would round down to 60 because that's the closest rounding down and we would use a 2.00 for our uh, critical value All right, so uh, you go to your table and you just simply round down um, to the nearest row. Or we can do this on the calculator, or I'm also going to show you how to do it on StatCrunch. Okay, so let's just write that down so we don't forget. Our value for t is 2.00. Notice it's just a little bit above what we would use using the normal table, the uh, 1.96. So we take x bar, which is 4.8, plus or minus 2.0 times 2.2 divided by the square root of 80. And Let's see what this gives us. So 4.31 for our lower bound. And for our upper bound, we get 5.29. All right, well, if you have a calculator, you can do that on your calculator. It's going to be a little bit of a different answer because we don't need to um, round our critical value to use the table. But we go to stat, then over to tests, and then we go down to number 8. I have the instructions right here. So down to number 8. Where it says T interval hit enter and we're just going to use summary statistics so you go to stat and then we enter our information so x bar is the sample mean uh, 2.2 
is the standard deviation. Our sample size was 80. And then our, our uh, confidence interval is 95, so I'm going to leave that alone. And then I just hit uh, Enter. Okay, so here's my uh, confidence interval, 4.31 up to 5.29. So I got the same answer. Uh, and if you don't have a calculator, we can do this really easily on StatCrunch. Once you open StatCrunch, these instructions are in your course packet. You can go to Stat, then T-Statistic, one sample with data. Okay, so if you want to use StatCrunch, Rather than uh, calculating those numbers, I'm sorry, not with data, with summary. So go ahead and uh, write this down, T stat to T statistic, one sample, then with summary. And then after that, it's real, uh, real easy. Just um, enter the information it asked for. So the sample mean was uh, 4.8. The standard deviation was 2.2. And then the sample size was um, 80. And that's all there is to it. I just hit uh, hit next. Well, that's not all there is to it. <laughs> I hit next. And then I um, hit confidence level or confidence interval. And I just need to adjust this to whatever we want. And since it's already 95, I just hit calculate. OK. so. Uh, our confidence interval here is 4.31 up to 5.29. So there's a couple different options for you to get the confidence interval. You can do it by hand using the t-distribution table. You can do it on your TI calculator, or you can do it um, pretty easily in StatCrunch as well. All right, so let's go back to the notes. And uh, finish this out. So we want to interpret it. We can be 95% confident that students require, on average, between 4.31 and 5.29 uh, years. Uh, I'm just going to write 5.3 in there. Years to complete their bachelor's degree. So notice a couple things. I state my confidence level. I use the word average, and I also have units. Quantitative variables have units, so I want to put that in there. It's important to remember to put the units in there. Okay, so let's um, we're going to skip sample size for now, and let's go do one uh, other problem. Let's do this additional problem on page 63. And this is uh, going over weight, which is quantitative. The weight of all 20-year-old women is 128 pounds. A sample of 40 vegetarians um, had a sample weight of 102. So x bar is equal to 122. And the standard deviation is 15. So s is equal to 15. So then, and then we want to compare that to the parameter 128. The parameter is uh, 128 for all women, so that's a parameter. And we want to compare that to the population of vegetarians, and so this is a statistic because it comes from a sample. The first thing we want to do is calculate the margin of error. Remember that formula was a t with the funny notation alpha over uh, 2. That just corresponds to the 95% times s over the square root of n. Our sample size is uh, 40. And so I can go to my t distribution table. And I want to uh, go to 95%. And I go to, uh, I always have to round down. So I'm going to go to um, 2.042. Since n minus 1 is not on there, I go down to 2.042. All right, so let's go back to the problem here. 
And uh, all right, so we have enough information to do that. So 2.042 times S, which is 15, divided by the square root of uh, 40. Oops. And that's an equal sign. And so I take 2.042 times uh, 15 divided by uh, square root of 40. And that gives me 4.84. Uh, I'm just going to round to 4.8. All right, so that's the margin of error. Now we can easily calculate the confidence interval. We would take um, x bar plus or minus uh, this formula here, since that's our margin of error. So x bar is 122 plus or minus 4.8. So 117.2 uh, for our lower bound. And 126.8, oops, that's not very neat, uh, for our upper bound. Oh, sorry. So 117.2, comma, 126.8. Let me write that again. 117.2 up to 126.8 for the confidence interval. All right, um, let me just show you real quick on the calculator. I go to stat, then uh, test, then I go down to eight. And I do uh, the sample mean of uh, 122. The standard deviation of uh, 15, and then our sample size, which is 40. And we still want a 95, and I just hit calculate. Okay, there it is 172.2 and 126.8. All right, and then for the stat crunch, folks, uh, I go to stat. T statistics, one sample with summary, and then I put in the same information, uh, 122 for the sample mean, 15 for the standard deviation, and 40 for our sample size. I hit next, I hit confidence interval, and then I hit calculate, and I get the same confidence interval. As I do there. And then, uh, all right, let's finish up this problem then. So we can be 95% confident that on average, vegetarians uh, weigh between 117.2 and 126.8 pounds. Uh, uh, this is less than uh, the average for all women, and that was uh, 128. Oops. I can't get back there, but uh, so we can be 95% confident that on average vegetarians uh, weigh, that should be weigh, between 172.2 and 126.8 pounds, and that's less than the average for all 20-year-old women, which was uh, 128. All right, there you guys go. Have a good one.